This evening we'll look at Mark chapter 14 verses 12 through 21 as we look at another one of Jesus' words, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. We'll talk about Christ's care for Judas, for the apostles, and for us. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours tonight from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the message tonight is from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 14, verses 12 through 21. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at, and eating at table, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied. One who dips bread into the bowl with me, the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. So far the text. This time of year it's so easy, I think, to picture those events that are taking place in that upper room. We've seen so many times in movies and presentations that Passover meal where Jesus sat that last night with his disciples. It was all ready, it was all prepared, the lamb had been sacrificed, the table set, the meal was being served, and they were sitting around enjoying the meal together and all of the Passover liturgy around it. When Jesus laid a bombshell on the table. I tell you the truth, he said, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were all immediately questioning. Jesus, with perfect clarity and understanding, knew exactly moment by moment all of the things that were about to transpire. All of the things that had been prepared since the beginning of the world were now unfolding. And this evening was his last opportunity, his last opportunity to share his will and testament with them. But there was a traitor in their midst. One of you will betray me. They immediately began to look inward, to reflect on who they were, to consider their own weaknesses, their sinfulness in the sight of God. And uncertainty arose within them. Is it I, Lord? Surely it isn't I. Around the table, one by one, they questioned their Lord and Master. Judas too followed suit. Surely it's not I, Lord. Jesus didn't say who it was, but in his compassion, in his concern, he addressed the soul of one who was struggling. One who had given him over, not simply to betray his whereabouts, not simply to arrest, but to arrest, torture, and crucifixion. He's concerned about Judas tonight. First of all, as he says these words, this isn't the only time when Jesus had given Judas warnings. There were other times that you may recall in the scripture as well. Perhaps if you comb through the conversations in your mind, you might come up with these words. There are some of you who do not believe. 
Judas certainly said the right things. Judas certainly was with the apostles. He had been a part of the brotherhood all along, and yet Jesus knew his heart. He did not believe. Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil, Jesus says in John chapter 6. One of you is a devil. Nor is the upper room warning going to be the last time that Jesus is going to reach out in love and compassion to Judas because even in the bitter end, in the Garden of Gethsemane tonight, as we heard in our reading, in the Passion narrative, Judas arrives leading a mob, comes up and kisses his Lord on the cheek. Greetings, Master. And yet, Jesus, knowing what was going to happen, standing there having struggled through this time of prayer, and the scripture elsewhere says great drops of blood came out of him as he perspired, now faces his betrayer face to face. Jesus in love and concern questions Judas there. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man? with a kiss and yet Judas would not repent as concerned as our Lord's love was for this man never forgetting that his soul was just as valuable as every other soul never forgetting that Judas was someone that Jesus would soon die for he died for you and me he continued to reach out to Judas one of you will betray me. We've perhaps faced those times in our life as well when our faith was weak. And as Jesus speaks those words, he's also speaking with compassion and care for the other 11 disciples around that table as well. Because each of them were also sinners. <clears throat> Each of them knew their human weaknesses. Each of them knew that it would be possible, given the right circumstances, for them too to betray him. And they would, that evening, all run away on account of him. They would abandon him to the mob and to arrest and to torture. And even Peter, as you recall, the foremost of the apostles, the spokesman of the group, would turn his back on Jesus three times. I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. All the disciples were led that evening to reflect on their own sinfulness. And it's a tough conversation. And yet Jesus in his love is willing to sit down and have this conversation with them. Because he cares enough for their souls as well as Judas's to reach out to them. To prompt them to repentance. To prompt them to turn by faith and trust in him. His concern for you and me tonight is there at that table as well. For we might as well have been with him that night because his words ring in our hearts as well this evening, don't they? I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. One of you who is eating with me this night. And we are certainly as weak as all of those apostles, aren't we? How many times have you and I come up here to the Lord's table and shared that wonderful Last Supper with our Lord in which he gives us his very real body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion? And yet we have left the table and how have we served our Lord? We're forced to look inward tonight as well and see the same sinful weaknesses, the same sinfulness that those 12 apostles saw that evening. And God reaches out to us. Our Savior, our concerned and compassionate Savior, reaches out to you and I with the same love that he reached out that night to the apostles 
and especially to Judas, to call our hearts once again to repentance, to turn our hearts to him, that hearing those words, we might come on bended knee and say, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. For Lord, I have betrayed you again and again in my life. And yet your love for me is real. And that's the wonderful thing that we see tonight, don't we? In the words of Jesus, who goes to the cross for us, who's willing to fulfill all of Scripture, face the betrayal, the abandonment, the brutality, and the horrible death that his holy innocent blood and his bitter suffering and death might make us his own. And through the gift of faith in him, we might live under him in his kingdom. Jesus is concerned about our salvation as well. And we might say, surely not I, Lord. But it is us. It is all people who put the nails into those hands and feet and who thrust the spear into that gentle side. And yet, despite it all, he loves us. Despite it all, he's willing to die for us anyway. Despite it all, he refuses to stay dead. But in his death, our sins are forgiven. And in his coming resurrection, we have the assurance of life everlasting. I tell you the truth, Jesus says tonight, one of you will betray me. They were saddened. And I'm sure we would have been saddened at that meal as well. But there is joy to come. The joy of forgiveness and life with Christ forever. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this or any other topic, please find us on the web at emmanuelnrh.net. Please join us for worship Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Bible class and Sunday school at 10.30 a.m.